This episode is brought to you by Self Care for Diabetes, a virtual online program that's doing diabetes care differently. We don't tell you to lose weight. Instead, we help you create positive and meaningful changes that make your life with diabetes better than before. Visit selfcareforddiabetes.com to learn more. Hey, Glennis. Welcome to episode five. Hey, Rebecca. It's, uh, it's good to see you. I'm super excited to talk about our subject today. Yeah. Five is my favorite number. And, um, because even... you like the number five or because you like this topic? I seriously love the number five. I always have. I'm a I love learning how to count by fives and multiply yes. by fives using my hands anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's always been my favorite number. And we can't say a nice round number, of course. But, mm -hmm. um, but this is the fifth time we're kind of sitting down together and having a conversation about, um, you know, the intersection of, um, self-care and diabetes concerns and a really cool topic. Um, something that I care very deeply about just in my personal life, um, you know, because it helps me so much in many, many meaningful ways. Um, and because I'm an exercise physiologist, <laughs> uh -huh. but we're going to talk about movement and, um, yeah modifying why that's a good thing <laughs> yeah I think this is a good one for us to talk about because we you and I are at I think like either end of the spectrum of exercise <laughs> like you love exercise and I'm like I sort of like it but it really should be fun or it should be you know I'm just a reluctant exerciser so I think uh -huh. this is a good one for us to talk about because you know, yeah, I'm sure we're hitting the spectrum of folks out there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is that exercise was one of the first things when I was nine, I remember like feeling my heart beat and I was like, oh, how cool my heart's going to beat. And it was like, till one day it doesn't. And then it got oh. morbid really fast, <laughs> <laughs> which I did in my adult years learn that that's an age appropriate age to kind of be like death and dying. And, oh, um, wow. But anyway, alas, I, it, it was this, oh, kind of a positive body connection and a positive way of caring for my body. So I actually, like, I wasn't really that into sports when I was younger. I was very playful, you know, um, I love to dance and love music. So there, I mostly had a positive connection to my body and movement. And then as I got older and sort of diet culture did its diet culturally thing, right? You know, hula hoops and jumping rope wasn't necessarily these fun playtime kid activities. And it was like, I was taught that it was about calorie burn or intensity or whatnot. And, but even though when I became certified, it was like, I, I had this intention of like, let's have fun with the music. Let's make this fun. And, um, so even in the, in the trainings, I, that I was where I was getting my trainings. It, there it was it was mostly a very positive health focus. It was definitely you know weight normative, um, but it was a lot of it was intended to be positive. And I think that's one of the reasons why I feel like I love exercise now is because of healing work where I was able to get through to not make it be about um, earning food or changing my body and to find, you know, find moments of happiness and joy um, and accomplishment around movement. And I think that's possible for everyone, no matter your interest in movement or no matter your current fitness level, that, you know, the real problem is the industry and not necessarily you. So I really hope we can dive into all that cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this, this episode is for anyone who feels like what they can do with movement or what's available to them right now is just not good enough. And I think that's, you know, you mentioned diet culture and that I think is where that comes from mm -hmm. is this, this idea that whatever we're doing, it's not good enough. You've got to kind of, you know, go harder, faster, better, stronger, like that death song. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is, this is for, you know, if you're a beginner or maybe you're just coming off an injury or maybe you don't have the time or you feel left out of the fitness industry because it's all about intensity and pushing yourself over the limit. And I think, you know, this is, this is, there are a lot of folks out there like that. Yeah. Yeah. Even when we try to resist it, it just keeps showing up a Facebook ad, a, you know, a, a comment from somebody else. And, um, you know, I think what I would love to offer in this space is that, you know, we want to be encouraging of movement if you're interested in it, if you're curious about it, like that is a, 
that is kind of like you want the fastest way to find and connect to your inner caregiver. You approach something with curiosity and interest. So acknowledge and validate pain and negative emotions from the past while you pause and ask yourself, you know, um, is there, is, is there a, a place to be open and curious and interested? And from that place, um, see how you might be able to approach movement differently. Um, and I think it's real important, you know, that we are here to help listeners understand why it can help with diabetes concerns. Um, and if nothing else, if I had to have like one key wish, I really think that it's that feeling of, you know, body autonomy, right? So as a listener, um, by the end of this, you're saying, you know, any positive or meaningful step that I can take toward a peaceful relationship to movement and my body is worth it. Um, I think that's just so important to get to because from there, I think a lot of really positive and meaningful things can, can grow. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Rebecca, you're an exercise physiologist. What do you tell people about the benefits of movement? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, anything that I could say that's not about weight loss or body, you know, there that that's, you know, I love it when people have set those hopes aside, but almost always when they're asking, you know, there's these assumptions, it's about calorie burn, et cetera, et cetera. So I really try to focus on mind and body benefits um, and that, you know, to really try to make it personal, that it depends on your approach to movement. And, you know, I'll kind of pose it as a question back, like, well, what's your why? You know, what is your why for movement? Not necessarily what you've been told, right? That's something really interesting to reflect on and think about who first told me what the meaning and purpose of movement was and what was helpful and what was not helpful along in my journey. Um, it is well documented that movement can help with sleep, anxiety, stress, generally balance out of your mood and emotions. Like, you know, all emotions are good, even the negative emotions. They help guide you to focus on you things you care about, right? But we're, you know, we don't love feeling, you know, stress and anxiety. But movement is something that can um, can help um, complete the stress cycle, that can help you cope and um, kind of feel a little bit more grounded and able to pivot to go on the next, you know, important and meaningful things that you need to do as part of your day and your life. Um, very interesting. Um, exercise can improve body image, but it's usually when you're not trying to lose weight. So it's kind of like if you're not doing it to try, you know, because your body's a problem, you're trying to fix it, doing exercise can help enhance body image. And what the research kind of shows around there is like it is more of a connection to this sense of accomplishment. So whether it's like, wow, it was a really pretty hike today. I really love the view. The fresh air felt great. Or, oh my gosh, I had been working on, you know, you know, being able to do like knee push-ups with good form and I did five. That feels great. Like, you know, just like, like, like these, these, when you have an interest or a desire and you match that desire with some sense of accomplishment that you're validating, right? Um, that, that, that can sort of help improve a body connection, right? We can appreciate our body for, for all the things that it does for us. I mean, yes, you know, during the movement that we're doing, but just, you know, the, 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 the things our body does without us having to think about it, you know? Um, and so I think that's a really valuable sort of, you know, physical and mental health, um, connection that we can all make and cultivate, um, you know, movement really should not be punishing or shaming, you know, which <laughs> seems like common sense, right? Like, don't beat yourself up when you're doing that exercise. Always ask what you would tell a friend and it gets really clear, you know, but I'll have a client be like, oh, you know, we'll do a workout together and they'll be kind of struggling with something. And, you know, I ask for feedback and say, you know, I feel very demoralized right now. And I was like, gosh, you know, tell me what your mind is telling you. It's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm being really punishing, you know, like, my, you know, my mind is saying that I suck because I can't do, you know, this push up the way I want or something like that. Um, and so it's not just because we all like being mean to ourselves. Those thoughts are put there by the fitness industry that has certain body ideals and says, um, uh, that achievement is about hitting it hard or going to extremes or all these other things that really 
aren't true for health and well-being and are really not helpful for creating positive connections to movement. Um, and now more directly for diabetes concerns, the simple way I like to explain it to people is like muscles are amazing parts of your body and they are thirsty for sugar <laughs> because, um, you know, you use glucose for energy for every muscle contraction. So that's all your daily activities. Um, but that also includes movement. So walking, swimming, chair, whatever, um, dancing, all of that, any muscle contraction it is for that to happen, it recruits um, glucose as energy. And um, Glennis, I would love for you to add a little bit more um, to that concept for listeners. Um, yeah, so um, so the diabetes, um, so the American Diabetes Association has some recommendations on their website and I wanna throw those out there first, but mm -hmm. then talk about really go a little bit deeper um, on that, um, they so they recommend the standard 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise a week, um, and that's we've been hearing that for years, right? That's sort of been the the general government recommendation, um, it, and that's great, I think. Um, but one, I want to say, if you're not there, you know, if you're setting yourself like I must do 150 minutes a week, and you're not there, I think that's sort of just a recipe for, oh, I feel like I failed if I didn't mm -hmm. do it. So starting, you know, starting where you are and just, you know, starting little bits at a time. But going back to you're talking about that sort of thirsty muscle situation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's the cardio, which is great. I went to a conference a few years ago and they, they explained this wonderfully. And I was like, oh, this is so useful. This is such useful information. Um, and, you know, they said, talked about cardio is great for using up blood sugar. And I think we've all just been told, you know, diet culture, cardio, 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 have to do cardio, mm -hmm. burn, burn, burn. And, you know, I think that things like resistance training, anything mm -hmm. that uses those muscles gets ignored in a way. Um, but what I learned is that while the cardio burns up like available sugar, you know, in your bloodstream, burns up, uses up actually to use, use a more um, technical term. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. the, the resistance training actually helps improve insulin resistance. So it just makes your cells more thirsty for that, mm -hmm. um, that blood sugar and more able to use it more readily. Um, and so, so of course, you're going to think about what your interests are and that kind of thing. But I think it's just mm -hmm. useful to know that there's a lot of different movement available that you can do. And then, mm -hmm. of course, you want to just be mindful when you see that whole manage weight or lose weight, as they, mm -hmm. as they often will say, is this expected outcome of exercise. Because I think that's another way to tank your motivation around around wanting to do any of that. You hear cardio and, you know, weight training, you're like, oh, my God, that's. I don't want to do any of that because what if I don't get the expected result, right? But mm -hmm. as opposed to as opposed to just focusing on exercise as a beneficial um, thing, regardless of any weight change. So, so there's a lot of good reasons to get into movement for blood sugar. Um, in addition to all the things that you said, which I attest to, like managing stress, anxiety, <laughs> getting better mm -hmm. sleep. I do think it does improve our body image because, you know, we're kind of feeling our bodies from the inside. And I think that, you know, as opposed to sort of that self-objectification phase we can be in, we just feel, you know, we feel what it's like to have a body. And so there's just, there's, there's kind of no downside to, mm -hmm. to thinking about movement. Um, you know, I think it's. A, yeah. It's and I just thing. think kind of validating that, like, Anytime you're doing something for the first time, you know, it is, there's uncertainty. It feels awkward. You don't know yet. You don't have the experiences yet, you know, or maybe you're starting over. So you have some negative memories, right? But like, it is that sort of beginning again, right? It's like the, the nerves on the first day of kindergarten or whatever, right? You know, it, so it's like to, to pause and think about an intention, like what, what is it that I hope to, to, um, you know, get out of this. And because perhaps maybe the intention is about trying something and see how it feels in your body or see what you think. And maybe it's a song that you already know you love to listen to, and you just want to move your body in space and feel your body and, and take more of like a gentle movement, stretching type of approach and validating, okay, look, 
that is movement and that counts as movement. And that part of me that thinks it has to be long, intense, hard, and extreme, that is a message I'm looking to unlearn. And so validating that something like that is good enough and I'm interested in, I'd like to try something like that again, or I'd like to try something else next time. But it, it kind of, um, I would love it if everything we approached with movement was just easy and we didn't feel anything, but actually you can feel things that can feel quite challenging when you're doing movement. And when we feel that difficulty and then say, oh, it's because I suck. That just is kind of like you said, tanks motivation. Um, but yeah, as you were saying earlier, you, we do want to think outside of the cardio box, if you will, when you think of um, movement and physical fitness, it's really the blend of cardio strength and flexibility. Um, and, you know, something I learned early on in my training was about research on people who were aging and Tufts University did some great studies showing that, you know, you could be like 90, 100 years old, right? So that was the age group of the study participants and literally from a bed lift a one pound weight, one pound weight bicep curl, one pound weight overhead. <laughs> um, and there was substantial um, muscle strength and endurance improvement and um, they saw remission of sarcopenia, which is muscle loss. Um, so I just, I really want to encourage you to think about strength training with a total reframe, like Glennis, like we were talking about earlier. Um, you can use it with as low weights that are good for you. Resistance bands, like even cans of soup. I mean, I, when I was young growing up in Ohio, I would go in the cupboard and get cans of soup. And it was like me and the chicken noodle soup or something, but you know, it was equipment. Um, and you can do anything from a chair, right? You could start on upper body and core from a chair. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to join a gym to start strength training. Yeah, I mean, I love hearing you talk about that because um, it's something you can do at home if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, and one of, the th one of the things I kind of like, go, oh, I can't believe this was true, darn it. Um, is that, you know, as somebody caught in diet culture for a long time and like on that hamster wheel, kind of burning, burning, burning. Um, and I, I gave some thought to weights, but I, I don't think I knew why I was doing it. And I certainly was not getting enough food in to, you know, build any muscle strength. And it was very discouraging to do any kind of weight training in that situation. Mm -hmm. But years later, when I'm figuring out my exercise stuff, which I will be for a lifetime, I've realized, <laughs> um, you know, I started kind of one of those places that are a little too high intensity, quite frankly. But if you go in and decide you're not going to do the intensity they're prescribing, it can be a bit better. But doing a lot more weight training, mm -hmm. I was like, oh my back pain disappeared, my leg pain disappeared. And I was mm -hmm. kind of like, oh, darn it, they were right. You know, mm -hmm. this actually is really useful for my body. But, you know, and the other thing is, you know, my my A1C went down a little bit and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, they're really right about this exercise stuff. <laughs> like in some ways I was like, oh, now I have to do it. But then when I realized, oh, actually I'm getting more fit. This is getting easier. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, oh, this actually feels good. I really like feeling stronger. And, and it was all detached from weight. Nothing was happening with my weight, which is great. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it just felt very um, kind of wonderfully empowering to do that, to do that level of exercise. It wasn't about weight. It was about being stronger and feeling better. And mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, this idea that you have to do like going back to the 150 minutes, like this idea mm -hmm. that you have to do that right away. It's like, no, if you can maybe do something once a week and that's where you're starting, or if you can get up from your desk a few times a day, and just have a little scroll or something like that, like that's, you know, start sort of there and, and go forward without thinking you have to accomplish everything right away. Um, and I'm thinking of a, I think maybe we could put it in the show notes to have an article um, that shows that, you know, we've always said even just 10 minutes, it's like of exercise is helpful. Well, it turns out that even something as little as two minutes of exercise at a time is really helpful um, for heart health. And, mm -hmm. and it was a great kind of great article to show that like, there's no amount of exercise that's too little to start with. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that if, you know, that's how I came at it in my mind, I'm like, I'm just going to do a little bit and see how it goes and build from there. And that's, you know, that's, that's, I think more useful than just coming at it and 
you know, think we have to be perfect. But the other thing is there's tons of, I'm just talking about like, that's the capital E exercise. There's so much other stuff. Like I had a client who took up gardening. He's like, I'm hauling around. Yeah. yeah I got a little garden plot and community garden. I'm hauling around, you know, bags of soil and hoeing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, you're getting a lot of good strengthening exercises. So, you know, again, just sort of thinking about, um, you know, water exercises, water dancing, um, pedal mm -hmm. from the desk. I've seen those. So there's so much, there's so much stuff to do that mm -hmm. can see you. Um, yeah, almost and, like experimenting, you know, like experimenting, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, what else is there besides cardio strength? Yeah. So, um, the, that third piece, um, flexibility, um, real important part of movement. It's the most ignored, um, including by me for a very long time. <laughs> in, mm -hmm. in fact, it was interesting when you were talking about, um, you know, feeling some improvements after, you know, finally doing some strength training that worked for you. That story is, I also had low back pain and, you know, thinking it was all these things. And what really ended up hap helping was gentle and restorative yoga. Um, and it took maybe about a month. I, I, I really gave my body some rest and I did this gentle restorative yoga and here it was. So it was relate The low back pain was, was related to tight hamstrings. And I also worked on my posture. Um, but it is, it is going to be the, you know, the idea of flexibility is like, that's just stretching, <laughs> you know, it, but in reality, it's most likely to help you have good form, you know? And so listen, walking is very natural, but there's a form to walking. There's a foot strike and all that stuff. Um, it, flexibility also can really be helpful in preventing injuries. Um, so it's not just stretching, you know, stretching is part of our flexibility, um, you know, but it's, you know, get it out of your mind that, oh, that's not hard enough, or that's not good enough, or that's just a waste of time, or, um, because it cannot be further from the truth. Many people don't realize, um, that, you know, that flexibility can really help, you know, their posture can help their muscles, um, just, you know, reach high to pick up a dish in the cupboard, you know, um, that they can help their body feel better. And then when it comes to doing like purposeful movement, like we talked about, it can help you have better form and things like that. Um, and yeah, if you are listening, it's like, you know what? I wonder if my hamstrings are tight. You just try to bend out slowly, <laughs> lean and bend over forward. And if, if you feel that in the back of your legs, you probably have some tight hamstrings and you could benefit from a short, gentle, you know, flexibility program, whether you follow yoga or, you know, stretches for walking type videos or whatnot, there's all types of resources out there, but I really just want to encourage calm and gentle stretches. They can feel good. They can feel relaxing. They could be stress relievers. Um, and you know, I had mentioned restorative yoga either. You could search on, you know, the internet or YouTube or something like for chair yoga postures and just find some things that you could try out and, and start. And again, I know we themed this like modified movement is meaningful. And that's really what we want to help you focus on. It's like, listen, being able to do some yoga stretches from a chair, right? As opposed to not doing anything from a chair, right? It is better. And it's better if it feels like something you could be curious about and open to and this idea of practicing, right? So notice maybe a short-term benefit, like, oh, I feel, I feel a sense of accomplishment or I'm glad I took that moment to have some breath, you know, um, let me go on with my day. But like, what happens a week later, a month later, right? It can take a while before you 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 notice maybe some unexpected longer term benefits of movement. So I also want to encourage people to, you know, stick with it. Yeah. I, I think it's, um, I think the great thing about something like yoga or, you know, stretching and flexibility is that it supports all the other movement that you're going to want to do, um, mm -hmm. or you might want to do at some point. So, um, definitely useful. So to sum it up, why does modified movement matter? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's interesting, right? Cause as much as we're like, yeah, let's talk about, let's focus on modifying. Right. It, I got to thinking, I was like, well, what are we modifying from? Right. Right. It's almost like, oh, well, there's a norm and you're not it. So here's a modification. So I even find myself kind of dancing around this idea of like, 
Well, we are kind of making this assumption, right? Called the cultural we, right? That this is where everyone starts. And then there's deviations, you know? And it's like, so even just challenging that's like, what if we took this definition, right? You know, to don't assume that there's a target and then the modification is just something else. But it's more like, I want to approach something in movement that sounds interesting to me. And I want to find like a way in it that feels like a good fit, right? That it feels like it's connected to my body, that it, you know, it feels like it's a good fit in doing something beneficial. Um, and, you know, I think the most compassionate way we can approach movement um, is to be thinking about feeling good in the long term, you know, what feels good immediately kind of physically in the body um, and just start there and build. And certainly really challenge the idea that being hard on yourself, you know, is like it all important to continue, right? So we can't control our thoughts and feelings, right? When you hear that negative, you know, criticism, oh, you didn't do it again today. You better do it tomorrow. Okay, wait a minute. How could I say that differently? You know, this is something that I'm working on establishing and, you know, uh, you know, um, I, I have time to do it tomorrow. So I will go ahead and try tomorrow, but I don't want to beat myself up about the fact that it did not happen for me today. Um, I did want to address challenges too. Um, you know, there are, are going to be lots of different things that can show up as challenging for you during a workout. It could be mentally challenging, physically challenging, a bit of both. Um, and, you know, there will be times where you might want to approach kind of kicking it up a notch or approach a challenge. Um, so like, for example, you know, we could say that swim aerobics class can feel easier on the joints, right? But it's still challenging to like move through the water, right? And so I wouldn't say that there's any good reason to look at that activity as say less than running or you know, something you might have heard of HIT or high intensity interval training, right? And that if you can't get to the pool, but you can chair dance or you can hula hoop, you know, do something from home, walk them down your stairs. Maybe you've got five minutes, 10 minutes, but like any effort, any effort that you could do now is good. And there's a way to like, you know, feel the challenge and find the challenge and let that challenge just be what it is, a body response and not a judgment or not, you know, a decision. Um, you should be able to breathe while you're doing um, activity and um, you can always stop and take a rest. So to know that you have some basic kind of tools and skills um, to approach movement, how to approach a challenge, and if it's feeling like too much, what to pivot back down from, I think is all really good so that as we go through the what ifs, you know, well, what if about this and that before you start, go through that checklist and then you should feel a lot more relief about going ahead and approaching modified movement. And remember, like we said in the beginning, it, it really is good for you in the long term as part of your self-care for diabetes plan. Yeah, I think one of the most useful um, sort of framings of modifying movement I've heard, it was from um, Mark Settembrino of Fat Kid Yoga Club, and he talked about adapting the posture rather than, like you said, there's no norm that we have to be starting from, right? So it's like, we're really adapting everything to our own bodies. And I think it's just, it is so important to go at the pace that feels right for you. And I don't necessarily mean like easy, but your level of challenge is going to be different from say someone else's level of challenge and that's okay. And you can decide what level of challenge that you, you want to sort of go to. Um, yeah. And so I, I just think it's, um, you know, if you're feeling reluctant around movement that, you know, look at, are you putting a lot of pressure on yourself? Are you sort of thinking, oh, I failed in the past and it was all, you know, connected to weight loss and it was, you know, unenjoyable and, you know, and how do you bring, how do you bring the fun back to that? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I just want to, um, close with a suggested reflection for movement. And I'll have the words for this in the show notes as well. Um, but just if you could take a couple minutes to take, um, bring some thought to these questions. And I encourage you to, um, you know, take just a deep, calm, relaxing inhale and exhale breath. 
and ask yourself to approach these questions with curiosity and compassion. And the first question I would like you to ask is, who first taught me what to think about movement and what was said? And so this could be a specific scenario that's just coming, just boom, popped in your mind, or it could be a, a general thread of where you kind of first come to know about movement, but who first taught me what to think about movement, what was said? Um, and give yourself as much time as you need to answer that. I think the second question that would be so good to reflect on is um, ask yourself, what is one thing that I would like to unlearn about movement for my well being? So, what is one thing I would like to unlearn about movement for my well being? And the third question is what is my why? And I'd like you to find just one positive, uplifting, intentional, beneficial, open minded aspirational, inspirational, something that feels good. What is my why for movement? Um, and you know, I, I think you'll find something important and meaningful. It could be that a gut reaction response. And then you might take a little bit more time and journal on that and expand on that. Um, but I think if you ask yourself those questions, it's going to help reveal a starting point to approach um, taking meaningful action. And I feel like if there's one thing that we've kind of narrowed in on through our conversation is about, um, we do have a lot of healing to do around movement in our body, but we, we kind of need to look at things differently, more flexibly, um, more about finding a personal fit and open-minded and our own personal reasons and interests and curiosities and, you know, do what we can to care for ourselves throughout the process. But, um, you know, when it comes to self-care for diabetes and something that we do in all of our group work is really just help to find something that's personally meaningful in an approach that, that, um, makes it feel less scary and, and, and more optimistic. And I think if you're, if you get there, you can't go wrong. Um, and you are really going to do what you need to do to um, create a healing space for yourself. That is really, um, I think those re reflections are really lovely and really useful and helpful. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And hopefully if you guys are um, ready to join our group, you will consider doing that. So we have monthly live calls and um, 14 modules. Once, as soon as you sign up, bam, you get all the modules at once, but we coach you every week by email for the first three months of your membership. And, um, we got a great group of folks. So we'd love to see you there. Yeah. And that's our show. The podcast is made possible with support from listeners. Please donate to help offset production costs at gofundme.com slash body kindness. And please rate and review the show when you have a moment. It really matters. Let's keep the conversations going on Facebook. Search Body Kindness and request to join the group for Body Kindness readers and listeners. Have a question for us to answer on a future episode? Visit bodykindnessbook.com slash question. Body Kindness books and audiobooks are available wherever books are sold. To request a signed print copy, visit bodykindnessbook.com slash order. For other questions about this podcast, please email info at bodykindnessbook.com.